Hello, my name is Philip Northover. I'm the technical service manager with FMC, covering the area of Southern California and all of Arizona. I'm based in Bakersfield, California. But today I'm in a citrus grove just northeast of Exeter, California. We're gonna to talk to you about a pest uh, that is not really known for the damage it does directly to the tree, but more, for, more the result of phytosanitary restrictions uh, when California citrus is shipped into an export market, uh, most notably South Korea. The fuller rose beetle is a dullish gray brown beetle with a long snout, which get, makes it appear much like a weevil. It is an insect that spends almost its entire life cycle in the soil. Uh, it's quite long lived, it can live for well, for well over a year, but it spends its larval stages in the soil and effectively develops with the, in the soil while feeding on young root hairs from a citrus tree. Over the period of about six to eight months, these larvae grow and develop and they continue to feed on larger and larger roots until eventually they reach the surface of the soil. Generally, uh, they spend their, most of their lives three to three inches to about 24 inches below the soil. They reach the soil surface after the larval stages have reached their, their highest level and they begin to pupate. After about six to eight weeks as a pupa, depending on soil temperatures and usually triggered by moisture, uh, an adult emerges, a female fuller rose beetle. And from there, it makes its way up, whether it, into the canopy, whether it has to crawl up uh, tall weeds, um, low hanging branches, and the trunk as well. It makes its way to the young developing fruit and basically the remnants of the flowers, uh, known as the calyx, uh, with the sepals, is where the eggs are generally laid. Um, the ovipositor or the egg laying structure on the fuller rose beetle is quite long, so it allows it to get deep into that underneath the calyx at the end of the fruit. And from there, maybe 10 to 20 eggs are laid. Over the course of the lifetime of a fuller rose beetle, each female may lo lay as many as a thousand eggs in multiple places. As the eggs develop, uh, they become they become the young larvae again, and they effectively roll off of the, roll off of the fruit uh, and fall to the ground where they repeat that life cycle. It's a bit of a challenge to, to manage due to the fact that it has multiple emergence times. Now, generally the peak here in the San Joaquin Valley is roughly July, August is where the highest levels of adults tend to emerge, and then later in September. If you're looking at more of the coastal crops, generally you see that later in September as the peak, peak time for adult emergence. Now, while this is the peak time, it's best to put the management practices into place a couple of months early. Uh, generally, uh, you'd rather do this in July or preferably June, where you wanna start really beginning to manage for the pest. So the first thing you need to do is you basically have to scout for the pest. Take an orange, look at the sepals, peel underneath that and look for masses of eggs. Now the guidelines for this require roughly uh, five to 10 per tree across your blocks. So you're looking at about 500 oranges per acre. Now that's a tall order, but again, this pest can be a significant problem later on uh, due to, again, due to the phytosanitary restrictions. So that's the first step. You wanna to scout to see if the pest is here in the first place. Okay, so now I'm looking at the bottom of the base of the tree here. And what you're hoping to have is basically a clearance of about 25 inches, give or take a few inches. But basically you want the, you want the fruit off of the ground and any of the branches to basically be well away, from, well away from the ground. In this case, they are very well. So this is a nicely skirted tree. Uh, and again, reducing the likelihood that fuller rose beetle will be able to get into the canopy. You'll also notice that there's no weeds um, around as well, um, any tall, tall weeds, even if they've already dry, dried and have stiff stems and are still sticking out, that's another, another means that the fuller rose beetle can get into the canopy. I'm now underneath the canopy of the navel orange tree and I'm at the, I'm at the trunk. And when you're applying Brigade WSB, the trunk application needs to be applied from the base of the trunk to about 15 inches above, at least to around the entire tr trunk of the tree to eliminate that pathway for fuller rose beetle adults to get into the canopy. If you're applying it to the soil as well, which I'd recommend, you wanna make sure you get all the way from the trunk to basically the outer canopy 
canopy, applying it to the soil again uh, as a as acting as an insecticide on the young larvae, but also again preventing the adult fuller rose beetles from being able to develop and get into the tree. So just to remind you, for fuller rose beetle, you want to make sure that you one, scout for the pest, two, remove access points from the ground into the canopy. So you want to skirt your trees and you also want to make sure that you remove any weeds or any debris that would allow the fuller rose beetles to climb into the, to climb into the canopy. They do not fly, they have to crawl. So please keep that in mind. And number three, you want to apply Brigade WSB to both the trunk of the tree and also the, also the canopy. You have a maximum of five pounds per acre per year. There are ways on the label that indicate how you should calculate that. And remember, you must use a hooded sprayer to reduce drift because you cannot get the brigade onto the, onto the developing fruit. <laughs>